classitis. I know I had it once where every single selector I had to do was a class. You hear it a lot though, everything must have a class, but there are other ways to select things in CSS. Or sometimes you just don't have a choice. You're working within a theme or within certain constraints where you can't really change the HTML, you can't add a class where you need it to, and you have to find another way to select something. Some approaches are better than others in this situation though, so we're going to be diving into some CSS combinators in this video. Today we're going to be looking at descendant selectors, or if you want to call them by their actual proper name, combinators. It's a, it's a fun word to say, no? Combinators. It sounds like something from like a bad sci-fi movie or something. Watch out, the combinators are coming! But yeah, in this video what we're going to be doing is looking at two of the most common combinators that you'll ever see, which is this guy right here and this guy right here. And what we're going to be doing is looking at why you might even want to bother with them, the similarities between the two, because there's a lot of similarities between the two which cause some confusion, so also the differences in when you might might want to pick which one of these guys. Let's go and dive in and see what these guys are all about. So for this one, I'm just in CodePen because it's a nice easy example and it's also easy to share. So the link to all of this is down below if you want to check out my code. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start up here in the navigation area because it's a really common design pattern that we run into and it just happens to be a perfect exploration of the descendant combinator. And after that, we'll dive into this area over here, do some fun stuff there, look at the side effects that the descendant selector can have and jump into the child combinator. And I'm going to say selector sometimes when it's a combinator, just how I'm used to talking. So a lot of the time we have a navigation, it looks something like this in our markup and you might have a class here. Maybe everything here has a class on it. Uh, but I think just having a primary nav on here is probably enough. And so what we can do is we can come in to our CSS here and let's hide away this. We know we have our primary nav. So primary, primary nav. And what we want to do is not really select the nav itself. It's all the stuff inside of there. So we get our UL like that. And here we can do a list style of none that gets rid of our bullet points. Then we come in and we say that it has padding of zero. I'm going to go a little fast here because I'm sure you've done this on navigations and lists before. Um, and this right here is our descendant combinator. And it's a descendant combinator because it will select any descendant that is here. So the space here is indicating that my UL is nested inside of my primary nav. Um, this does raise specificity. So this, uh, if you know about specificity, this means like this is a class selector plus my element selector. So you get like a zero one one on your specificity. Um, in general, that's one reason people don't like descendant selectors or any of these combinators. And again, I'm going to say selectors a lot when I mean combinator um, because it raises the specificity in cases like this. I don't think they should get in the way but it does also depend on the team and everything you're working in. But uh, you know, for me, something like this is perfectly fine. And why it's called a descendant, um, to go further into why anyway, it's called a descendant selector is because I could also select my list items this way. Actually, let's just throw a display of flex on here so they actually go next to one another. And there we go. And so then I can select my list items. And on the list items themselves, I might say that there's a margin of, I'm going to make it pretty big just so we can easily see it, 3M. And now we can spread those guys out. Uh, maybe we should do zero top and bottom, 3M left and right, <laughs> just so we're spreading them out a little bit. And so this is selecting my list items that are inside my primary nav. Even though the list items aren't a direct child here, they're just a descendant of my primary nav. So that's why we have the list item like that. Where this is different from the one where you see this guy right here, the little triangle uh, bracket. So this guy right here is called the child combinator. I like, I often call him the direct child or direct descendant selector, um, just because it's looking at direct it, this these list items would have to be a direct child. We're not looking at grandchildren. We're not, it's no other descendants. It's only a direct child. And if we look at my primary nav, there are no LIs that are direct children of my primary nav. So in this case, something like this wouldn't work. We can't do that to select our list items. And you could come in and say ULLI, or you could even come in and say like something like this. Uh, which would work, 100% would work. Now there might be a good reason to have to do something like this if you have a nested list, that's always possible. So sometimes you do drop down navigations with a whole bunch of nested lists and things like that. So in cases like that, maybe you need to get into more complicated selectors like this one. But if you just have a regular flat navigation that has no sub, sub menus or sub lists and things like that, that means there's not really any reason to do that. And there's also no real reason to do something like this. 
Uh, and this really, it's making it a little bit more complex of a selector. Not that it could go wrong because your list item should always be inside of a UL, but just to say like, you know, if I could do this, why not keep it as simple as possible? It's also will keep the specificity lower. I'm not going to deep dive the, the specificity impacts on here. If you're not familiar with specificity, actually, I would recommend the video uh, that's popping up right now just because it dives a little bit deeper into it. But yeah, just if we don't need to raise it, then you don't have to. And again, you could just stick a class on each one of these, but sometimes you don't have access to that or just a nice simple site. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it this way. So if we can do things this way, why would we ever bother with this? Well, that is one, one of the areas could be if you do have a nested list that could or a nested list items, this could cause problems if you don't want them all to be styled the same way. So you might need some direct child um, selectors or combinators like that. Um, but I think another area that's going to show pretty well what we want to do is over here. So what I've done there is I have this area right here. Um, it's a div called text center. It has nothing else going on, but we have three cards in there. I just call them cards. They're not really cards, but whatever. We have three divs. All that's important is we have three divs in there. Each one has a title um, or a heading and a paragraph inside of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a, uh, let's call it even columns class right here. So with even columns on there, what I'm going to do is say that my even columns and if you need columns, nice, easy way to do it is a nice display flex. But we run into an issue here. Look, they're not all the same size. Um, and there's a good reason for it. It's the way flex works. If you don't really understand that and you'd like to know more about it, the card right there dives into why this is happening specifically. So I won't go into it in this video. But basically, this guy has more content than the other ones. So the way Flexbox calculates it all, uh, he's getting he's, he gets to be longer. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. So one way we can fix this is to come into my even columns here, even columns. And I want to select everything that's inside of there. And one way we can do that is put a space and then put a star. So the star here is saying that anything, it's my wildcard selector, anything that isn't inside of even columns or anything that's the descendant of even columns can have a width of 100%. And while that's going to fix it and you go, oh, if, if that works, uh, that's awesome. And if you're going, why is that working? Again, check out that video that I told you the card about or I'll, I'll link it in the description as well uh, if you want to wait until later. Um, but this will make them all nice, even balanced layout. But there's a really big side effect to doing something like this. And that is if I come into one of these cards and let's say I add an icon that I just happen to have here. If you were following with my starting files, I'll try and remember to put that um, as commented out so you can just comment it in. And then I get this giant icon like that. And I don't really want to get this giant icon like this, right? That's kind of ugly. Uh, so you could go, well, Kevin, now you can select that icon and overwrite it. And I guess I could with this, I don't know, 10 or 25 pixels just to have a number. Um, and it shrinks down, but then it also, that requires me to actually have it in the right order. Um, so depending on how I've organized my CSS, maybe that's a problem because now this and this, they're both selecting the same thing and this is getting overwritten by this. There's so many reasons, you know, I could even, this could be SVG and then it's not working or whatever it is, right? So there's a lot of times where this could backfire and it's just creating more work for you than you really need. So that's where instead of doing that, having this guy on here makes a lot more sense. Um, now I know it's not 25 pixels, but it's going back to its more native natural resting size at this point. And what this is saying is only select the direct children of each column. So are each, yeah, inside of there. So if I come in, I look, the direct children are my three divs here. So all three of these divs are getting this width of 100%, but nothing else is. Nothing inside of those is then getting the width of 100%. Now you might have other ways of fixing this. If we used a flex basis here instead, it wouldn't cause the same problem. So in this situation, sure, maybe there's other ways to get around it, but overall, understanding the difference between this guy and this guy right here and knowing why you might want to use one or why you might not want to use one or why you might want to be more specific with this direct child one is really good to know. Look at your HTML, look at your CSS, see what you're trying to accomplish. And then knowing what you know now, you should be able to decide between the two of them. And these aren't the only combinators that are out there. There's also the adjacent sibling combinator as well as the general sibling combinator as well, which can be used for really, really cool, fun and awesome stuff. If you'd like to learn more about those, the video for it's right here so you can dive in and watch that. And with that, a really big thank you to Zach and Randy who are my supporters of awesome on Patreon as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.